Hello y'all and welcome to the Young Folk Knits podcast. Today let's talk all about how you can become a spinner. y'all and welcome to the Young Folk Knits podcast. My name is Casey and this is a channel where I mainly talk about knitting and I also sometimes like to chat about spinning, sewing, crochet, painting, who knows what I might dabble in. I also like to chat about life here on a small farm in Arkansas where I live with my husband and our children and we are beekeepers. We love to raise chickens, animals, and spend time outdoors here in the foothills of the Ozarks. So if any of that sounds like something you might enjoy, please be sure and subscribe to the channel so you won't miss out on any new videos. So knitting has definitely been the hobby that I have loved the longest and stuck with the longest for sure. But I have recently in the past few months fallen down the rabbit hole of spinning. Suddenly, the world I used to know, I see it differently. You woke me from a dream, now here's reality. Baby, baby, you are really hurting me. I think that's not too crazy because creating hand spun yarn and knitting do go hand in hand. And I think knitting with hand spun yarn just makes it that much more special. So maybe you've been seeing spinning wheels, spindles, hand spun yarn all over the internet lately. And it looks cool. You like the look of the yarn, but it also seems a bit overwhelming. I know for myself, I didn't know exactly what I needed to start with. And I also didn't know what I was doing because I live in Arkansas in the middle of nowhere. And I don't know any other spinners in the area <laughs> so there's definitely no classes that I could take in person around here I don't know of any in Arkansas there may be some somewhere I'm just not aware of it but definitely none in my close proximity I guess about six months ago I ended up taking the dive I got a spinning wheel I got started and I have made a lot of mistakes and also learned a lot along the way. While I am still a total newbie beginner, I found that some things were really helpful to me and some things just felt like they were a step above beginner. They didn't really cover the very basics. So I thought a little video with all of the things about spinning I wish I'd known when I got started might be helpful to any of you who are also interested in joining the spinning community. My girl Taji from the podcast Stitches and Starlight is a very experienced spinner. She knows all the things. I am a total newbie and I do not know all the things, but I'm very passionate about spinning. I'm loving it so much. So apparently we've been dubbed the spinning mafia because we are trying to convert everyone into spinners. <laughs> So come to the dark side and join us. All right, first of all, let's talk about what you need to start spinning. Well, I know most people just automatically think of a spinning wheel, but believe it or not, you do not have to have a spinning wheel to spin your own yarn. The thing I got first was actually a spindle. I got a very cheap wooden spindle from the Woolery and I'll put a link to all of these things in the description below. So you'll be able to just click on it and it will take you to the website to see exactly the different items that I'm talking about. 
So I got a pretty cheap traditional, I think it was around $20. I think there's even $10 wooden spindles that you can get. And I highly recommend doing that because you may get a spindle and some fiber for $20, $30 and you might try it and just think, you know what, I do not enjoy this. I don't like it. And you've only invested $30 instead of hundreds of dollars if you go straight for a wheel. <laughs> there's all kinds of different spindles. There's Turkish spindles, there's supported spindles, there's drop spindles. And when it comes to drop spindles, there's all different kinds. So I'm going to link a book that also talks about different spindles. But I started out with a drop spindle and some very cheap undyed wool from the woolery that I began to practice on. And I thought it was really cool, but I'll be honest, I felt that it was very slow going and I just don't have a lot of time. So because of that, I did end up moving to a spinning wheel. So when you get into actual spinning wheels, there are so many <laughs> different kinds of spinning wheels. There's scotch tension, there's double drive, there's castle wheels, there's single treadle, there's double treadle. I mean, it's just overwhelming looking at all the different things at first. So I'm going to assume that you are a beginner like me and I'm going to give you two spinning wheels that are very beginner friendly. However, I believe they will take you through your entire spinning journey. The first spinning wheel I want to talk about is the Ashford Kiwi 3. So this is made by the Ashford Company and it is a lovely double treadle, very simple scotch tension spinning wheel. What I think is lovely about this spinning wheel is that it is very well made but it's very simple and easy. However, if you look at the reviews you will see that that does not mean you're compromising on quality. It's just a really nice simple little spinning wheel. It's not crazy big. You can fold it and store it. It will fold flat. Also, you can either buy it assembled or unassembled. I bought it unassembled and that saved me even more money. I think this is an absolutely wonderful wheel for a beginner spinner. Anna from Brook Willow actually got one before I did and she assembled hers as well and she really loved it, was having a good experience with it. So I felt like I was safe to go ahead and purchase this after a lot of research. Something else that I love about the spinning wheel is that it comes with a built-in Lazy Kate. So once you spin your yarn and you spin these singles, you'll actually spin your yarn onto these bobbins. And it does come with three bobbins, I think, which is really nice because once you have spun your singles, most of the time you're probably going to ply those together to make a plied yarn. You might just spin singles, but I think especially as a beginner, you will probably need to ply those together to have a better <laughs> yarn. So whenever you're plying those together, you're going to want to have something to put them on to keep it feeding really neatly onto your bobbin as a plied yarn. The nice thing about the Ashford Kiwi 3 is that it does have a built-in Lazy Kate to hold those bobbins for plying. The one thing I don't love about it is where it's located. It is located on the spinning wheel on either side of your treadles. If you're not holding your singles at a certain position, like I have to pull mine back to my side, then it is very easy to actually get wrapped around the mechanism for the treadles. So you have to be very careful doing that. Once you do it a couple of times, you figure out what you're doing and where to hold it, and it's not an issue. But a Lazy Kate that's not attached in that position, I think I would actually prefer. But I don't have to buy one, it did come with it, so that is nice. And in the end, I just think that it is well made, it's beautiful, it's low profile, it works. It does exactly what you need it to. And I think it does pretty much everything you would need it to do through what a basic spinner would do during their spinning lifetime. I'm very pleased with it. That being said, I originally wanted to get the Lindrum Double Treadle. So let's talk a little bit about that one. 
This one is a few hundred dollars more and it looks almost identical to the Ashford Kiwi 3. However, there are a few differences that I think make it a little bit of a better wheel. So one of the main things that I think makes the Lindrum better that I wish I had on the Ashford Kiwi is the fact that the wheel itself is at the front, whereas on the Ashford Kiwi 3, the wheel is behind the length of the bobbin and the flyer. So that extra dif distance sometimes makes it harder whenever you're starting treadling. You have to lean forward quite a bit to spin the wheel in the direction you want it to. Sometimes I'll just spin the flyer in the direction I want it to go, but it might catch and it doesn't always work as smoothly. So I think having the wheel at the front would make it much easier to really lean forward a little bit and give it a spin in the direction that you want it to go. Now, from what I understand, the Lindrum Double Treadle does not come with a built-in Lazy Kate. However, you can purchase a package from the Woolery at extra cost that comes with more things, including a Lazy Kate that you can use. However, that is an increase in price. All of that being said, I really think either wheel would be perfect for a beginner. I don't think you could go wrong either way. If that few hundred dollars makes a big difference, I honestly think you would be just as happy with the Ashford Kiwi 3. And spinning wheels tend to have a really nice resale value. So if you ever wanted to upgrade to a new or different wheel, you could most definitely find a buyer for either of these wheels. One other type of spinner I wanted to talk about is an e-spinner. I do not personally have an e-spinner, so I feel a little bit less equipped to talk about that but i do know that there are some great options out there their size makes them more portable easier to travel with if you're in a space where you don't have room for a full spinning wheel it's another great option that's something else that you could keep in mind but for now let's talk a little bit about fiber all right so you've got your spinning your spindle or your e-spinner and you're ready to start making yarn and everywhere you look you see the most gorgeous hand-painted hand-dyed comb tops or braids of fiber like this so these are the lovely beautiful colors that draw us into hand spinning so what this ends up looking like when you take it out of a package are these long <laughs> long yards of beautiful wool. <laughs> what do you do with it? First of all, this can be expensive. These could be anywhere from 20 to $40, depending on how much you get and the type of fiber that you get. I think a great thing to start out with, even though it's not as pretty, for a beginner spinner, which is what I did, is to get some undyed, wool roving or comb top or a bag of wool from the woolery that is pretty cheap and great for you to practice on. You don't have to feel bad that you mess it up. You're not as stressed if it's not coming out perfect. That's what it's for. It's for practice. It's for you to be able to see what's happening, to practice your hand movements because the first yarn that you make is going to be pretty awful probably. <laughs> mine is. So you don't have to spend a lot of money to invest in fiber right out of the bat. Maybe you want to use this for your second skein or maybe you just only want to work with beautiful colors which I understand. So my advice would be to start out with a wool like Corydell, BFL. If it's got silk in it, if it's got bamboo in it, that's gonna be harder to spin. Even merino might not be the best beginner wool. Uh, Ramboulet, Polworth, all those things are not the easiest to start to spin with. From what I have read, I would highly recommend maybe starting with a Corydell wool. It's got a great in the middle staple length, which you will find out why that's important if you watch some of the videos I'm gonna recommend later. But that having said, if you get one of these braids, what I would do at the beginning is split it down the middle in half 
and then if it's your first time using it I would go ahead and split those again into fourths because it is really hard at first to work with a big hunk of wool and if you get it into smaller pieces, it's gonna be easier to draft your wool. And just a little tip to make it easier, tie a very loose knot on the end that you start with of all the pieces so that you know which end and which color <laughs> you started with. And that way you can do all your bobbins starting at the same color. This is actually a club color from Nest Fiber. Nest Fiber Hello Yarn. They are a few of the, the more well-known fiber clubs that you can join. And once a month, they'll send you four ounces of a beautiful braid. It's a different color each month. If you love it, then you can usually go back and order more of that colorway. You can also find a lot of beautiful fibers on Etsy. A question that I have asked, and there is an episode where Taji talks about this because I asked her this question and I asked multiple people this question. I wanted to know how much wool, how much fiber do I need to get to make a sweater quantity? I really wanna make a sweater quantity and I could not get an answer. So Taji explained to me that that is because it's different for different people. It's different based off of the type of wool and based off of how you spin and based off of what size sweater you're making too, obviously. Probably for myself, I to be on the safe side, especially since I might make mistakes, I'm newer, I want to have enough of a certain colorway that I might not be able to go back and get. 24 ounces is probably a good guess. So for instance, I found this really lovely fiber, this colorway that I loved from a dyer on Etsy. And I thought I would like to make a sweater's quantity worth of wool from it. So because I knew I liked this colorway, I wanted to get it all at once so it could be as close to the same dye lot as possible. And I got, I actually got four of these four ounces which is 16 ounces. But what I can do is ply this with another yarn. So since this is a merino bamboo tweed blend, what I might do is get a merino and spin a single of that up and apply it with this so that I would have possibly a three ply and enough to make a sweater quantity. I am going to do the same thing with this. This is a braid from Bonnie who has Union Fiber and I absolutely love her colors. This is a New Zealand Corydale blended with English Angora and I am very very excited to spin this up. I have three of these braids and my plan is to make a sweater out of this so I will apply this with a straight Corydale probably. But anyway yes that can be a little bit of a difficult question to answer as far as how much do you need for, for a sweater quantity. Um, I'm usually shooting for around 600 grams. <laughs> okay, so let's say you've got your spinning wheel, you've got your Corydale fiber, now what? I'm gonna give you some great online classes that have helped me tremendously. <laughs> So at the beginning, I started out simply watching YouTube videos and that worked out great to get me started. It did get me spinning. However, I didn't see a lot of progress quickly in the right direction and there were a lot of things I just did not understand. One of the first things that you could do is watch some YouTube videos on setting up your spinning wheel. You can watch some on tension. I highly recommend the YouTube channel Jillian Eve. She seems to really, really know what she's talking about. I watched a lot of spinning videos before I ever got started, so I felt like I at least knew the lingo <laughs> and knew what was being talked about. But I feel like most YouTube videos are still brief enough that I did not really understand. I got the basic sense of what I was supposed to be doing, but I really feel like it wasn't quite in depth enough. So I have recently taken two classes on Craftsy. Sorry, ignore the rooster. 
So the first class I would recommend is called Drafting from Worsted to Woolen. And this is a class taught by JC Boggs Faulkner and she is one of the ladies that started Ply Magazine. I think she does an excellent job of teaching this class because drafting I feel like is very briefly covered in a lot of the YouTube videos, but she breaks down every different style of drafting, when you would use it, why you would use it, and how to do it. You get these really great close-up looks at drafting and I feel like it helped me so much. Even though I had been spinning for a few months, this really helped my drafting technique. Another thing I learned from this class is how to draft or um, to spin across my fiber back and forth. So whenever you have a dyed combed top you kind of want to keep those colors in order and when you're first starting it off the way I have done it was you just end up kind of spinning down the side of your fiber so if you can learn how to spin across it you really don't even have to break your fiber up into smaller pieces as much um, I like to usually just split mine in half I feel like I just learned so much from this class she was an excellent teacher and it has very important information that I think every spinner needs to see before they get too far along. The next class that I highly recommend on Craftsy is by Jillian Moreno and it is Ply to Knit. Jillian is an absolutely fabulous spinner. She's sort of like the spinner. She's like the authority and spinning. I actually have a book that she wrote and I have seen it recommended by multiple YouTubers and it is called Yarn Texture. And I would recommend taking this class after the drafting class. I feel like this class just sort of put it all together. So you got all these bits of things that you've learned and I feel like this class really put it all together. Okay, so you've got your spinning wheel, you've got your fiber, you've got your classes, you're ready to go. I just wanna share a couple of little things that I have found very useful as tools for my spinning journey. And then I wanna show you a little bit of the yarn I have spun. So first of all, I wanna show you this Knitty Naughty. This is a tool that helps you wind your yarn into a skein after you have spun it up on your bobbin. And you wind it up in these weird ways <laughs> that makes it into a long skein. This makes a yard or 36 inches all the way around. And that way you can even count your strands on one side and you know how much yardage you have. So I feel like this is an essential tool that any spinner needs. This is the one that makes a 36 inch or one yard skein and I got it on accident. I meant to get the bigger one and I would recommend the bigger one. This makes like little baby skeins. <laughs> Another thing I recommend is extra bobbins. So my spinning wheel came with three bobbins, but I actually now have six bobbins and I feel like I need all six of them <laughs> because if I'm storing some bobbins, if I'm doing a sweater spin, if I am got two projects going on at once, I definitely need multiple bobbins. And a lot of times what will end up being one skein of yarn is on two to three bobbins that you will then ply together. So you definitely need, I think, at least four bobbins. You know, I think that's, I think you probably need at least four bobbins, but six is nice. <laughs> One other thing that I have really been loving is this spinner's control card. So this is a really pretty wooden one that I got off of Etsy with a moth on it. But what it has on it is this WPI gauge. So I'm able to measure my finished yarn for wraps per inch and tell what weight the yarn is as far as DK worsted. It also has this control card where while I'm spinning I can pull it back off the bobbin and give it a little bit of rest and I can lay it in these slots and it also tells me 
what way I'm spinning at the moment. Then it has this great sort of protractor almost, which helps me to lay my plod yarn on it and see what my twist is. So that's actually really helpful when you're applying as well. Okay, now I wanna show you a few of my hand spun skeins and tell you my thoughts on spinning them. All right, my very first finished hand spun skein was this merino from Malabrigo Nube. And I'll just tell you, I was highly drawn in by the beautiful colors, <laughs> the deep moody tones. It was absolutely gorgeous. However, I do not recommend Malbrio Nube for beginners. It was awful to spin. There were these horrible felted places all throughout it. It was just really difficult. It did turn into a beautiful yarn, but I feel like if I had a little bit more experience, I might have been able to deal with the difficulty of it a little bit better. It was frustrating at times though, because it was just not a fun fiber to spin. <laughs> I do absolutely love the color though, and I think this would make a beautiful hat or cowl or used in some kind of color work. The way I spun this was that I split my fiber in half lengthwise, and then each of those halves I split again in half and then again in half. So almost into eights, I believe, is the way I did it. I spun them onto two different bobbins, and then I made a two-ply by simply plying them together and let the colors <laughs> go as they would. I, I really like the way it ended up though. I think my ply was not not too bad, not too unbalanced for a beginner. My singles were atrocious, but my ply was okay. This is the second skein that I spun. So this I actually spun for my daughter. My little girl likes to knit and she is going to join in the Color Me Happy Cow that I am hosting with Taji. And this is the yarn that she is going to use for part of her cowl. And I got this from Nest Fiber. It was an ounce of Polworth and then an ounce of Polworth in silk. So I spun those separately as singles and then I applied them together and it made this really fun candy heart <laughs> colored yarn and she loves it so she's very excited. The Polworth was difficult to spin and the pole oh it was not Polworth and silk it was Polworth and bam Polworth and pineapple that's what it was so it was very interesting. <laughs> it wasn't the easiest for me to spin um the fiber broke on me a lot, and I think that I didn't put enough spin in the singles. But then in the end, to make a balanced ply, I do have some pretty unspun spots in the yarn. However, it looks like a pretty cool art yarn, and she loves it, so I think it'll work out okay. And then the last of my finished plied yarn that I have is a club colorway from Nest Fiber. This was November's colorway, 2022. I believe from Nest Fiber and it was Ramboulet. So it was, you know, I love Ramboulet. Ramboulet is actually one of my absolute favorite yarns. However, it requires a lot of twist in your singles. My singles were definitely a bit underspun. I will say though that before I applied this yarn, I had just finished Jillian Moreno's class on plying and I felt like I did the best job I've ever done on plying before. It was a really balanced ply and I'm happy about that. So now I'm going back to my singles to work on getting the singles really good. And if my singles are good, then I've, I feel like I've already got plying a little bit more under control. <laughs> so if I can get my singles under control, I'll be in a better spot. This is about 155 yards of thick and thin DK to bulky weight, but my w, my wraps per inch end up being an Aran weight. So I think I may make a hat out of this. It has some cool striping colors. We'll see how that turns out. 
as I said, I am a new spinner. So these are all things that have been helping me as a beginner that I would recommend to other beginners. If you are an experienced spinner or you're starting out as well and you have a few suggestions that you think might help the rest of us, then I would absolutely love it if you would leave them in the comments and that will make this an even better resource for new spinners. Thank you all so much for joining me today. And if you're interested in spinning, I hope you found a few things that might make your spinning journey a little bit easier. If you're new, then don't forget to subscribe. It helps my channel out so very much and really helps me to continue to create video content. As always, I appreciate all of your likes and comments, and I look forward to chatting with you again soon. Until next time, happy knitting, y'all.